Always ranked among the top dozen of Golf Digest's 100 Greatest Golf Courses, the West Course at Winged Foot Golf Club surely has the most notorious set of putting surfaces in the country. The West Greens don't just tilt from back to front, they tumble downhill like a marble staircase. Built atop a strata of granite and pitched like the roof of a house for surface drainage, they were built back when green speeds were half what they are today. Nowadays, they're the stuff of runaway putts and nightmare scores. It's been said Winged Foot West is a second shot course, but you better be able to hit fairways as well, especially during a U.S. Open. You can't position shots below the hole to leave uphill putts without spin, and Winged Foot's dense rough robs a ball of precious spin. Success on the West Course requires discipline. Drive it accurately and play approach shots conservatively. This is every hole at Winged Foot West. The opening hole at Winged Foot West establishes the course motif. The fairway is narrow, but not unfair. There are no fairway bunkers in play off the tee, but the rough can be deep and punishing. The fairway is more or less level, which makes the raised green beyond a pair of frontal bunkers on the left look all the more prominent. The green is seven foot higher in back than it is in front and has ruffles and dips along its steep decline. Architects Gil Hans and Jim Wagner recently expanded the green to its original dimensions. So there are new, or rather reclaimed, pin positions around the entire perimeter, even at the very front. A fairway bunker on the left turns the second hole to the right. And although many trees have been removed throughout the course, some tall ones were preserved on the right side of this hole to pinch the dog leg. The V-shaped green is narrow in front, wide in back, and of course canted from back to front. Stretching the green size to original dimensions of architect A.W. Tillinghast means that the hole locations can be placed even closer to bunkers than at previous U.S. Opens. That tall elm behind the green has been there since the course opened in 1923. The bunker on the left, well short of the long par 3 third, was restored by the team of Hans and Wagner because Tilling has had put one there in the beginning. It's not in play and serves aesthetics, not strategy or challenge, but the two deep bunkers that frame the green cannot be ignored. They've always posed difficult recoveries. When Billy Casper won the 1959 US Open here, he laid up short of the narrow, steeply pitched third green in every round rather than risk landing above the flag or in a bunker. Each time he then pitched on and made his putt for par. Course designers often speak about a variety of options off a tee, but for most of Wingfoot's long straight tee boxes to its long narrow fairways, the option is in club selection rather than in the choice of a particular angle of attack. That's especially true on the par four fourth, where flanking fairway bunkers guarding the landing zone demand a precise dead center drive. There are likewise bunkers to the left and right of the slippery green, so the second shot must be precise as well. With the green expanded to its original tabletop shape, cuts can even be cut in back corner pocket positions. The fifth, which is a modest length par five for everyday rounds, now plays as a long par four in championships. The hole turns gracefully to the left with two bunkers on the outside turn. The first one, another decorative tilling ass bunker less than 200 yards off the tee. The second, some 285 yards out that will catch drives that don't move left with the flow of the hole. The tilted and tightly trapped green has its highest and lowest spots on the right, so most putts break toward the right front bunker. Number six, with its skinny offset fairway, has long been considered one of the most exacting short par fours in US Open history but its short distance might suggest it's now a drivable par four for many in the field. Though the green, gently pitched like a catcher's mitt, can contain accurate tee shots, it's a very narrow target shaped like the letter P, and there's a stream just off the back left corner. Hans did remove a bunker at the front left of the green that wasn't an original, but now it's a hollow that requires a hard pitch from deep rough. So for many, six will likely be an iron off the tee and a wedge under the green, just as it has played in past opens. Number seven, the shortest par three on the course, has one of the flattest greens and thus is relatively easy to putt. The bunkers on both sides are nasty, especially the cavernous one on the right, deeper than a player is tall. For a long time, it was known as Johnny Miller's bunker. In the 1974 US Open, Miller, as the defending champion, needed four swings to get out of that bunker, 
There's actually another bunker beyond it now, not visible from the T, recently added because the original design had one there. The eighth is a dogleg right, and tall trees were retained on the right to complicate attempts to cut the corner on the fly. A power fade is the preferred tee shot here. The second shot is over a harmless cross bunker and slightly downhill to a newly restored geometric green that kicks most everything to the left, where balls can roll back off knobs along the edge that previously were part of the surrounding rough. The deep bunkers on each side of the putting surface are unique tilling ass shapes, a pair of big elephant ears of glistening white sand. Playing as a par five in the open for the first time since 1929, the ninth is the straightest hole on the course. Down a Frankfurter fairway of uniform width to a bell-shaped green, wide in front, narrow in back. Guarded by five traps, nine is the most heavily bunkered green on the west, with a dramatic diagonal one well short of the putting surface and the remaining four recessed around the perimeter of the green pad. A ridge that bisects the green forms a speed bump that will influence long putts. The tenth at Wingfoot West is one of the most iconic par threes in all of golf, reportedly tilling ass personal favorite. Because its green is hard against a property line, Ben Hogan described the hole as a three iron into some guy's bedroom window. But golf writer Dan Jenkins proclaimed it one of the best 18 holes in America in 1965. The green, its original size reclaimed, rolls like a miniature ski slope from back left corner to front right. Exposed outcroppings in front of the 11th tee remind us that most of Westchester County is solid rock. 11 is a playful par four with a fairway that lists to the left like the deck of the Titanic, a pair of distant offset bunkers that bracket its fairway's only flat spot, and an arrowhead shaped green that directs our eyes towards a pair of bunkers on the left. The middle of the green is a bowl that will collect shots so 11 is considered the one true birdie hole on the west. A championship tee was added to the 12th, the only tournament par five on the back nine before the 1997 PGA. And the hole is now nearly 150 yards longer than it was in the 1929 US Open won by Bobby Jones. Otherwise, the hole hasn't changed much. The fairway is an extended boomerang past a lone landing area bunker on the right, with the second shot flying past a field of bunkers that the 12th shares with the adjacent 17th hole. The approach is into a long ramp of a green that's not even half the width of the fairway and has four bunkers lying in wait to snatch any shot that's just a few degrees offline. 13, the last par three on the course, again bears a Tillinghast trademark cross bunker a good hundred yards short of the green. Someone had filled it in decades ago, but it was reinstated in the early 2000s and recently widened and reshaped to properly frame the view from the tee. The green tilt here is from back center to front right, so even uphill putts might have an element of side slope to them. The par 4 14th has been totally rebunkered since the 2006 US Open, where once a shamrock shaped trap on the left serves as the target line from the tee box, it now has a counterpart on the right that indicates where the fairway begins to swing to the left. The hilltop green, sitting on a diagonal ridge, once had a trio of traps below its right edge and a long one along its left flank. Hans removed all of them in favor of two Tillinghast originals at the base of the hill, which shouldn't be a problem for professionals unless they're hitting approaches from deep rough. The stream casually noticed behind the sixth green is now front and center on the 15th, bisecting the fairway about 300 yards out, which means many pros will lay up with something less than driver. Since the flat fairway suddenly drops downhill at the 250 mark, and anything longer will result in a downhill lie to an uphill green, many players will throttle way back, leaving an approach of more than 200 yards. The offset green, tight in front, is extremely long and several knobs and contours within the surface will make even short putts tricky. Sixteen, a member's par five but a championship par four, has the sharpest dogleg on the course, so the concern is to keep from running through the fairway and into the rough on the right. This hole once had the tightest approach to the green, too, thanks to a pair of trees that overhung the entrance. 
but the old maple on the right front edge that had been there since the beginning is gone. Its absence provides considerable access to the expanded green, which like many on the west, reclaim perimeter mounds as part of the actual putting surface. The tee shot on the long par 4 17th is the opposite of the 16th, being a dogleg right with hardly any trees in play. The plethora of bunkers on the right, shared with the 12th hole, are so close to the tee that they're not really in play for championship golfers, but the fairway does narrow quite a bit once it passes those bunkers. The approach shot is very similar to that of number 8, slightly downhill to a narrow off-kilter putting surface protected by deep bunkers right and left. The closing hole at the West Course has been the scene of dramatic putts that forced playoffs, as well as shockingly bad shots that lost championships. The hole encapsulates all of Wingfoot, from the narrow dogleg tree line fairway with a bunker on the outside corner of the turn, to the elevated green that drops nearly eight feet from the back with a clear plunge downhill at the front. Those concave cavities off the right edge of the green suggest they contained sand bunkers at one time, but in truth, They've always been grass hollows. One last architectural wrinkle from the thoroughly unconventional A.W. Tillinghast.